Coming now to depreciation and amortization of long-lived assets. Under the cost model of reporting long-lived assets, the capitalized cost of a tangible long-lived asset is expensed through a process called depreciation. The cost model is something that you probably know about already. When you buy an asset, you record it at the initial cost plus how much ever it takes to set the machine up. Let's say that amount is 1000 then if this machine is going to be used over 10 years and the and at the end of 10 years the salvage value or the value of the machine is zero then what you do is through a process called depreciation you allocate the cost let's say in this case we are using simple straight line depreciation then we take this thousand and break it into 10 parts so we depreciate 100 every year for 10 years such that the value is zero at the end of the 10 year period essentially what we've done is taken that cost of thousand and spread it over the useful life of the machine when we do this for a tangible asset the process is called depreciation when we do this for a intangible asset the process is called amortization an assets carrying amount or carrying value is the amount at which the asset is reported on the balance sheet. This is also called net book value. The book value when you purchase the asset in this particular case is 1000. After one year you have depreciated 100. So the carrying amount or carrying value is 900. After two years the accumulated depreciation is now 200. So the net book value is equal to 800 and so on. That is expressed through this simple formula. Carrying amount is historical cost, which in this example is 1000 minus accumulated depreciation. The historical cost is sometimes also called the gross value or the gross amount associated with the asset. There are several different depreciation methods. The three that you need to be aware of are straight line method where the cost of the asset is allocated evenly over the useful life. That is what we have done over here. There are several accelerated methods which depreciate more in the early years and less in the later years. So for example, if I had depreciated 400 first and then 300 then 200, then the depreciation would be called accelerated depreciation. And finally, units of production method means that we depreciate based on how much is being produced. If this particular machine can produce a thousand units and in the first year we produce 300 units, then we would depreciate 30% in the first year because the usage of the machine in the first year has been 30% of overall usage. Let us now work through an example which will illustrate the three methods. So we have three companies. One is called straight line, the other is called double declining balance and the third is UOP and obviously each of these use the depreciation method that aligns with their name. So we are given this information. Each company purchases equipment for 10,000 and makes similar assumptions. The, the estimated useful life is four years, residual value is 1000, productive capacity is 1000 units. Production is over four years and this is the production quantity. We need to complete the table below for each of the three companies. For straight line, the method is very easy. This is the straight line method. So every year the depreciation is based on a fixed amount. So we take the original cost, which is 10,000 minus the salvage value or the residual value, which is 1000. This is obviously an estimate and the four years is also an estimate, but that's what we go by. So this divided by four because the depreciation is happening over four years. So we do this calculation. That is the depreciation expense in the first year. And that in fact is the depreciation expense over all four years. Now, what I want you to do is complete this table for the straight line method. 
the ending net book value should be the residual value of 1000 which means that over this period over the four year period the total depreciation should be 9000 for the double declining balance method we depreciate based on two times the straight line rate the straight line rate is 25 percent so therefore using the double declining method we'll depreciate at 25 percent times two which is 50 percent but there is a small catch here we depreciate based on the book value at the start of the period so if the book value at the start of the period is 10,000 then in the first year the depreciation will be 50 percent of 10,000 which is 5,000 so at the end of the year the book value is going to be 5,000 now the depreciation of 50 percent will be based on 5,000 so in the second year the depreciation will be 2500 and we keep following that process until the value comes down to 1000 since 1000 is the residual value we are not allowed to take the book value below 1000 coming now to the units of production method here we need to calculate the depreciation per unit and this is equal to the cost minus residual value divided by productive capacity in our case the cost is 10,000 the residual value is 1000 so this number 10,000 minus 1000 which is 9000 represents the amount that will be depreciated so this total depreciation amount is divided by the productive capacity which is 1000 and this gives us 9 so 9 represents the depreciation per unit so if in the first year we have 400 units being produced then the total depreciation in the first year will be 400 times 9 which is 3600 so now let's look at the solution with the straight line method the total amount that is depreciated is 9000 and again this is 10,000 minus 1000 and then this is over four years so we divide by four to give us 2250 dividing by four is the same as multiplying by 25 percent so we have 25 percent depreciation every year that's why this amount is the same every year with the double declining balance we take the book value at the start of the year and multiply by 50 percent 50 percent because here we are taking a rate that is two times 25 percent with straight line we had a 25 percent rate here we have a 50 percent rate so in the first year the depreciation expense is 5000 in the second year the depreciation expense will be 50 percent of the beginning book value the book value at the start of year two is 5000 so the depreciation expense here is 2500 with units of production on the previous slide we calculated a depreciation per unit of nine in the first year we have 400 units so the depreciation in year one is nine times 400 which is 3600 in year two we have 300 units so the depreciation is 2700 and so on let us now compute the asset turnover ratio the operating profit margin and the operating return on assets for the straight line depreciation company and the double declining balance company in both cases we'll assume that sales are 400,000 per year the operating expenses without depreciation are 300,000 per year and the carrying amount of assets without the new machine is 300,000 so let's take the straight line method sales are 400,000 operating expenses this much the depreciation expense we've calculated that's this much so the total operating expense which is the sum of these two becomes 302250 EBIT is 97750 this is sales minus 302250 we are given the total assets without the equipment and then at the end of year one the value of equipment is this much so the total assets at the end of year one equals this much the asset turnover is sales divided by total assets 
the operating profit margin is the operating profit divided by sales and the operating return on assets is the operating profit divided by the assets at the start of the year so those are the calculations that I've done over here now with asset turnover I took sales divided by assets at the end of the year with operating profit margin I have sales for the year and the operating profit for the year so you can also come up with these numbers if you want but I think that's unnecessarily tedious they are just some points that I want to make first of all compare the asset turnover numbers this is sales divided by total assets the sales are the same for straight line depreciation and double declining balance obviously the denominator which is total assets will be different here with the double declining balance method the depreciation is more initially therefore the value of total assets is lower and the asset turnover ratio is higher so this number is higher than this number this might make it appear that the company using double declining balance is more efficient but that's not actually the case with operating profit margin the number is the same across all four years for the straight line method this number is lower than the number for straight line depreciation because the operating profit is lower so we have a higher depreciation expense a lower profit sales are the same in both cases that's why this number is lower with operating return on assets again we have the operating income divided by assets at the start of the year in this case the operating income is lower that's why this number is lower than this number so the central point here is that the two companies are alike in all ways except that they use a different depreciation method and by using a different depreciation method we get different ratios from a testability perspective this slide is extremely important it is showing us the impact of the choice between straight line depreciation and accelerated depreciation if you have done the example then this table will make a lot of sense but in any case I will give you the essence or the core points behind this table depreciation expense for a company that uses straight line depreciation the depreciation expense in the early years is going to be low whereas the depreciation expense for the company that is using accelerated depreciation is going to be high and we just saw that in the example obviously for the straight line company if the depreciation expense is low then in the early years the net income is going to be high relative to a company which is using accelerated depreciation the asset value is also going to be high because the depreciation and accumulated depreciation is relatively low which means the asset value which here is the carrying value or the carrying amount is going to be relatively high for the company that is using straight line depreciation obviously if assets are high then equity is high and we can see that using the basic accounting equation equity is assets minus liability assets are higher liability is not impacted by the depreciation method so equity would be higher for the company using straight line depreciation return on assets this is the net income divided by assets or it could also be operating net income in which case we would have the operating return on assets this would be higher for the company using straight line depreciation this is a little bit tricky we have said that the net income is going to be higher and we have said that assets are higher so both the numerator and denominator are higher but hopefully what you have recognized through the example that you just saw the degree to which the net income is higher is much more so this percentage by which the net income is higher is much more than the percentage by which assets are higher notice we are talking about total assets here the equipment is just one component of 
all assets so even though equipment value is higher but it's higher by a little amount so assets are higher by a relatively small percentage whereas net income is higher by a large percentage which means that this ratio net income over assets overall is going to be higher for the company that is using straight line depreciation relative to a company which is using accelerated depreciation for the exact same reason the return on equity is also going to be higher for the company using straight line asset turnover is going to be lower asset turnover is sales divided by assets sales are not impacted by the choice of depreciation method assets are higher for the straight line method and therefore the ratio asset turnover ratio is going to be lower operating profit margin is going to be higher this is because operating profit margin is your ebit divided by sales sales are the same for both companies the ebit is going to be higher for the straight line company because the depreciation expense is low so the operating profit is relatively high and the ratio then is going to be higher these relationships will reverse in later years the point being that what we have discussed over here is related to the early year of an asset's life where the depreciation expense is lower for straight line higher for double declining balance as long as the firm's capital expenditures are declining in the sense that the firm spends a lot of money on assets up front initially the depreciation is relatively high for the company using accelerated depreciation but then later on the depreciation amount for the company using accelerated depreciation comes down relative to straight line that is only if capital expenditures are declining if this is the case then our relationships shown here will reverse if capital expenditures keep rising then obviously we will keep having a relatively high number for accelerated depreciation component method of depreciation what you need to recognize here is that some equipment or some tangible long lived assets might have multiple components where each component has a different cost and a different life the question then becomes how do we depreciate this piece of equipment with multiple components what ifrs says is that companies must use the component method of depreciation which means that each component needs to be depreciated separately us gap allows component depreciation but the method is seldom used in practice let us do a simple example a machine has two components as shown here the cost for component 1 is 10000 and the cost for component 2 is 3000 the useful life for component 1 is 10 years and for component 2 is 3 years how will you depreciate using ifrs where the component method is required we need to calculate the depreciation for each component separately for component 1 assuming a salvage value of 0 the depreciation would be 1000 we are using the straight line method here saying 10000 depreciated over 10 years so each year the depreciation is 1000 component 2 will be depreciated over 3 years so here the depreciation cost is also 1000 in year 1 therefore the total depreciation amount is 2000 if we treated this entire equipment as just one piece of equipment then the cost would be 13000 and if this equipment were depreciated over 10 years then the depreciation in the first year would be 13000 over 10 which would be 1300 so notice that component method of depreciation would give us a different number relative to depreciating the whole equipment amortization and calculation of amortization expense amortization is similar in concept to depreciation we've talked about this 
the term amortization applies to intangible assets and the term depreciation applies to tangible assets. Intangible assets include customer lists, copyrights, patterns, trademarks, software, etc. Intangible assets with finite useful lives are amortized over their useful lives. So this again is exactly the same as depreciation. If you have an intangible asset with a 10 year life and you initially purchase this asset for 1000, then every year for 10 years you would depreciate 100 assuming the straight line method.